Well, in 1967, on his second sojourn in Culver Beach, I actually had some visitors, uh, Steve and Odell. Yeah, they've, uh, they're blown away by the wild, beautiful beach uh, and the quietness. Uh, while uh, up north in Collingwood, uh, the scene, hippie scene, is beginning to mushroom 50 kilometers further north. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adele, she's curious about his mellow lifestyle. She wonders, uh, hey, don't you ever get bored. He clues her in. Uh, I read. I listen to music. I go to the beach. I eat. And I dance. Yeah. I only get bored when there is something to do. Hmm. Well, uh, the couple wants to move with their 10-year-old child, uh, first hippies, to rent a house on the beach. And Eddie hesitantly shows them around. They take the first house offered for $5 a month. They do not bargain. Eddie winces, yeah, because uh, the Goins themselves have shelled out only half a dollar a month for such a house. And he worries, "Uh uh-oh, big spending hippies coming in, moving on to the scene. He might even have to pay rent. Well, uh, more freaks homestead by renting native houses on on, uh, Culver Beach. And sure enough, Eddie's adopted... Go and family, I ask him to find another place because uh, they have some relatives moving in or whatever. Eddie relocates to an outdoor bar and uh, that's closed for the season. Yeah. For a while, he sleeps rough on the bar tables, and uh, but finally he also surrenders to the inevitable and rents his own house for a few dollars a month, a large going house, no furniture. Um, and to the native going fisherman, this house, it's got some shady mango trees, good place to take a piss before you get in the boat. Yeah. Well, Eddie welcomes international travelers uh, without money to stay with him. His welcome, unconditional. The house on Culver Beach is his first organized communal household in India. Remember up at, up north in Bombay, that Bombay Freak House, he was a guest of an already established house. And uh, Well, the more traditional freaks in the neo-bourgeois neighborhood, they complain about Eddie's motley uh, house guests, uh, Petty gangster from New York, the idiots who shoot LSD in the vein, assholes who frighten going women by standing naked in front of them. His uh, so-called together. Hippie neighbors Stephen Odell are puzzled how he can endure living with such uh, miserable castaways. Hmm. He answers, because of the way I choose to live, I must spend time with people half my age. At least they are not on a fake spiritual trip. I only wonder why they can bear living with me. Uh, And protective of his ragtag crew, uh, Eddie uh, puts Steve in his place. Uh, How old are you, man? Steve. Maybe 15 years younger? than me, or so. If I felt about you the same, I wouldn't associate with your sorry ass. A young shit ass like you. Well, from the humble Culver Beach pad in 1967 and onward, Eddie becomes a compassionate safety net for the mad hippies of Goa. He flips out. Oh, so disoriented, so far away from home. Oh. <laughs> Freak ca- outcasts of Goa. Yeah, in his characteristic, nothing special manner, uh, Eddie shelters and feeds these outcasts for the following four winter seasons. Yeah. 
It is unconditional kindness. For the shunned, downtrodden, flipped out uh, hippies. The heartbeat of his legacy. Well, suddenly, uh, uh, a hippie named Big Steve says, Hey, look, uh, he enters the crash pad. Uh, that cute little blonde chick living in the palm hut at the other end of the beach, she's the famous folk singer, Mia Farrow. 23, impressionable Mia. Yeah, deeply touched by Maharishi. Mahesh Yogi's... Uh, speak uh, at an evening in Boston and meditation and she's recovering recovering from a broken heart after her divorce from Frank Sinatra hmm. so Mia travels to India to meditate with the Maharishi up at his ashram in Rishikesh she's waiting for the Beatles and Donovan to show up but she's a little too early to rendezvous with those uh, celebrities at the master's ashram so the tourist india tourist bureau suggests uh, maybe she won could relax and go for a while yeah while she waits so mia is living in a beach hut on Culver beach for a few weeks with her brother johnny she cooks on a kerosene stove <sighs> yeah mia Farrow. strolling the shoreline uh mia notices uh Eddie, squatting alone on the beach with his portable radio, she stops the chat. Uh, he remembers the fancy hem on her white cotton pajamas, gold-rimmed glasses, and this conversation. Mia, yeah. you people are so lucky to be able to live as you do. I wish I could do that, but I have to work. Eddie, uh, you must have enough money to drop everything and just to hang out for the rest of your life. Garbo did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm not Garbo. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy for me to break my uh, contracts and other commitments. 